Okay, this is the um, <coughs> January 29th meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. We're being taped by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing by our residents and the public uh, later on. First item on our agenda, <coughs> the minutes for the January 22nd meeting. Does everybody have a chance to review those minutes? Okay. Any additions or amendments to the minutes? No. No? All right. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for uh, January 22nd. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda, meetings attended by select board members. So right. I, had, I had one meeting, um, the capital improvement planning meeting, and, uh, and we reviewed you know, the, some of the, you know, Ron Sweet's items that are going to be on the warrant, and, and we passed all of them, and, uh, and we reviewed the bridge, which is not a, you know, not a piece of equipment, but it's a, it's a very large expenditure on fixing the bridge up on North Poland <coughs> Road, and, uh, and that'll be a great project to get that done, and if we don't do it and the bridge dies, it'll be a tragedy for the town. So we definitely approved that one. Okay. Well, they had a, uh, my main report only is that they were having their second uh, country regional school project meeting there. And they scheduled again tonight at six o'clock when at the last meeting, myself and one of the other selectmen <coughs> said we can't have it on Monday nights because we have our meeting. So they, I don't know what happened, but they rescheduled again for tonight. Is there a message uh, there? If they, keep, if they keep on doing that, I'm just going to have to resign from the committee. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know what's up with that. Okay. Um, Let's hope we get straightened out. Okay. I had a, uh, a Franklin Regional Council of Governments Council meeting last Thursday. Um, it was a very good meeting, very long meeting. Uh, we discussed a lot of things, especially the Franklin County Emergency Communications System, and um, you know that that continues to be a problem, and we're looking for uh, options, and hopefully uh, we can get more funding, or the state will take it over, uh, because it's a it's a huge problem for communications. I know you probably, Bob, you probably experienced some of that um, mm -hmm. uh, in your emergency communications. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we're working very diligently to see what can be done with that. And most likely there'll be a, a fix to continue for the next year. And then hopefully um, we get on to the 800 system for the state and we get some funding to do that because it will be a very expensive transition. But as I say, we're, we're doing everything we can at the FERCOG to, to try to reduce the, uh, the effect on the, on the Franklin County towns. So that's, that was my uh, meeting last week. And this isn't related to the investigation that was looking at merging the other towns in Franklin County with Greenfield and Montague? Well, Greenfield's still a portion. They are. Um, yeah, this is, this, is, this is separate. But that was, that, was just yeah. to keep the radio system up and running. Yeah. yeah. Uh, did the council act on the budget? There was a, um, there was a, a vote on the budget and it passed. Okay. Uh, it passed basically as presented. Thank you. Okay. Okay. You didn't. You didn't get anything on this? <clears throat> Not yet. Okay. You. You probably. Yeah. You're gonna get something this week, huh? Okay. We have any citizen concerns? I don't see any citizens here, so I guess we don't have any concerns. Old business. Uh, annual town meeting warrant. Review and discussion of the draft. Just a very few things. Um, uh, 
there is a new Article 7 uh, for replacing the police cruiser, um, which is slated to go to our fire chief. And, oh, I, I have included all of the Capital Improvements Planning Committee recommendations on this draft as well. Okay. Um, there was a, a four to one vote on the uh, Article 10, mm -hmm. uh, the boom. Um, Glenn Kuzmeskis thought that since town meeting voted it down last year, uh, he didn't want to recommend it from the Capital Improvements Planning Committee. Okay. So it wasn't a statement about capital improvements so much as what town meeting did. So, so um, he, did, he, did, he didn't consider it uh, on its own merits? Well, he didn't oppose it, but he, he just felt the town had spoken. Oh, you were, you were there? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Any other comments you have? No, okay. I just, just no, no, I, I thought that Ron did a really good job um, talking about things that they had to work on over the last year, that if he had had it, things that he, would, that he really could have used it for, and, and explaining how uh, um, many of the ways then that he has to take on that work is much more dangerous than, than if he had had this lift. To, to get people up higher. Yeah. Why is that? He could have gone out there. Yeah. Well, he could have, but that would cost the money too. Just, just a, a question on seven again. Um, how old is our current cruiser? Do we know? Uh, five years. That's when we bought the last one. Yeah. 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 Okay. And it gets gets constant use. It's, it's yeah. In the, it's, isn't it in the uh, re renewal process form? Uh, yeah, it should be. It's, 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 it's eligible to be updated now if we were going to, uh, you know, return it and, and right. get a deal. Is, is this is this deal. new? Is this new or used? This is new. New. Okay. Um, yeah. And yeah, it, it's, it goes about uh, fourteen hours a day. Yeah. On, on average. But the capital planning committee would like to see in, in the fire department take the old cruise rule instead of getting nothing for it in the train and getting rid of the old ninety nine and hundred. What do you what do you think of them? Well, by all means, <laughs> yeah, that's twenty. I have water old. leaking in the cab and everything on this thing. I'm driving. Your your thing is twenty years old. That's ninety nine. How old is how old is this one? Five. What we have now five. Yeah. Oh, we got it new. Oh yes, yes, I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Oh sure, absolutely. What, yeah, we should do that. Yeah, it's rust thick. I don't find it getting thicker anymore because all the rust is on it. But anyway. Yeah. Okay. I'm not asking for a new or a newer years one, but that that would be great. How, how, how many how many miles on? We know? So you just over 100,000, I think. Oh, okay. All right. But I got 100,000 on the old one, so. Still got some life. Well, yeah. And I don't yeah. put that many miles a year, huh? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I probably put, I don't know, 8,000 a year or more than that. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I'm thinking of bringing the uh, article, on Article 16, the new part time clerk. Um, <laughs> we want to make that available to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, if we did that for six hours, it would be six hours a week plus six um, hours over the year for the ZBA. It would be two meetings, basically. Right. right. At three yeah. hours for prepping and <clears throat> minute yeah, I, I, I can't see it being more than that. Um, but I'm also thinking of uh, uh, bumping it up to $16 an hour from 15 which would put it at 5082 um, right now, we don't have anybody working for that little end. Okay, so you want to up uh, that? What is it, Tom? So five what? Five thousand eighty-two. Eighty-two. Okay. Um, the flag fund uh, is up at five hundred now, based on convers a conversation with uh, a conversation both with Brian Blakesley and um, and. Uh, uh, Graham. Okay. Uh, so we have that yeah. from, from two to five. Yeah. yeah that's fine. Yeah. Uh, the numbers in the community preservation thing are still not this year's numbers. Um, when, when do we expect to have those? Do you know? Uh, that's not the company. Well, it'll be in the next yeah. month. They have to come from the committee, right? Mm. Yeah. Well, and they have to work with the accountant, and they're 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 getting it all in order. 
Um, it, it, it's not difficult. It's just. Uh, That's uh, Peter Zale in charge of that committee. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah. and Dusty King also does uh, shares the organizational duties there. I always email both of them. I, I think okay. Dusty does a lot of the, the budgeting stuff. Okay. Um, other changes there. Oh, I guess the only other change is right at the end, um, where there is a ballot question because. Uh, if borrowing for the uh, for the bridge is going to be uh, debt excluded, we need a debt exclusion question um, on the ballot. So, okay, uh, that'll be that. Uh, again, still waiting. Uh, the planning board will be having its hearings and coming up with its article. And, uh, <clears throat> I think they're planning on holding off till the uh, fall for the. Uh, marijuana zoning changes and I don't think the wastewater committee has anything now I, I'm starting to work with them on looking at the possibility for a mass works grant for that which might be the only way that it would happen so hey, can I go back to this fish uh, cruiser one is that most money to buy for yes that is Quite comfortable. Can you check check all that? Um, I, I am I am aware of the cost of okay. and that's without a trade in, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Okay. When does our warrant close again? What date? Uh, March thirty. Well, March twelve. It's, it's about sixty days. It's sixty yeah. days 60 before sixty days. Okay. Good. So we do have plenty of time. Any any other questions for Tom? Okay, great. Thank you, Tom. Okay, priorities for direct local technical assistance for the first time. I just uh, okay. I, this is what we went over last yeah, week, yeah. and I, I put Y is in here. Yep. Yep. Um, and what we should do is replace them with a one through five. We can either do that now, or you can do it individually and get them to me, and I'll I'll add them up and no, we're divide by three. Why not discuss them now? Yeah, let's, let's do it now. Okay. All right. So on uh, planning projects, let's see what we have to prioritize. We have zoning, open space, Deerfield River, floodplain, and recreational marijuana assistance. And I'll point out that the, the first and last are more or less the same because the only zoning development, zoning bylaw development that we asked for, and this is via the planning board, was for recreational marijuana. Oh, I'm sorry, no. We also asked for short-term residential rentals. Right. So there, there are two of those, but uh, one of them is, um, and the other one, the recreational marijuana assistance, includes public education and outreach and development of local board of health regulations. So really between the planning board and the board of health, these are their, their main um, items. I think we should put that recreational marijuana assistance as number one. That's what do you think, coming up pretty fast. Yeah, so yeah. I, I think I think that's a good one for number one. And probably the next one up on top should be number two, I guess. Zoning goes with, with it. Plus the uh, plus for short term yeah. residential. Yeah, I think that's that's important. I would uh, I would put uh, Deerfield River uh, economic impact study as last. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's last. Last for number five. Mm -hmm. um, how about uh, floodplain and river management three? We we already have a municipal vulnerability grant for that. Okay. <coughs> so what so it is for? We're going to get that okay. anyway. Yeah. All right. And then open space is three. There you go. Okay. Regional projects. Good. Regional projects. What do we got here? We got. Local official continuing education workshops. We have the regional opioid task force uh, network and collaboration training opportunities for emergency management directors. Support local substance abuse prevention plans for young people and succession planning. Okay. 
These are tough ones here. Who wants to take a stab at one? Social support, local substance abuse prevention for young people. I like it. I think that's a very important one. Number that one. and the opioid task force. Yeah. Two of them. Yeah. And the opioid task force two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Local official continuing education workshops three. Three. Yeah. Those are all very good. Okay. Uh, succession planning. Okay, I'm not sure how critical that is. If it's important, I don't know how critical it is. I'd put that at five. What do you think? Mm -hmm. And then four would be networking collaboration. Yeah. Okay. Any other suggestions on those, Tom? No, that's beautiful. Okay. I have till Wednesday to send it in. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Right. I'm glad we did it. You got all the numbers? Right yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay, comment on the draft marijuana regulations. Now, this is just the comment that I've already developed on your letterhead with your signatures. Right. Mm -hmm. For you to look at, we have, um, we have time, um, but... Uh, I, I look these over. I like, I like these comments. I do, too. Yeah. Bob, well, I think the most important one was uh, Tom's comment for this... Uh, which specifically spells out the requirements for the Board of Health. Yes, oh, absolutely. Very, very important. Yeah. Looks good to me. Tom, any, sure. other, any other comments on this? No. You're through with your comments, correct? Yeah. Yeah, this is it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So is it, then, is it February 8th, February 10th? When is the, when is the FERCOG hearing? The sixth, six. the sixth, which is a I Tuesday. Said, I knew it was coming up. Yeah. It is a yeah. Tuesday. Um, one of the things that you—that's what ten to one. Yeah, ten to yes. one on the sixth. Yeah. Um, you might want to throw in. There was one thing that I was thinking of throwing in, which was um, I also support the comments of the Franklin Regional Council of Governments because they're developing their own comments mm. and they're going to be really expensive and cover a whole bunch more than. How can you support them? I'll see them first. Well, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm okay doing it, <laughs> but I understand where you're coming from. Absolutely. We'd I'd support we, it probably, but I'd like to see it first, you know what I mean? Yeah. And we could always write a separate letter later, no? Um, well. Do you know when they're forthcoming, Tom? Uh, oh, yeah, we can write a letter after the 6th. Um, yeah. And they will have had theirs on the 6th. So yeah, this isn't the end of the public comment process, uh, but it's it's fairly tight. Um, it may not be much longer than that. Um, I'll see if I can get a copy um, for the next select board meeting. Why don't we sign this copy for now? Sure. And if there's something else that we want to add to it, we can do that later. Yeah. yeah okay. Sure. Um, I'll make a motion that we sign the. Um, Draft the comments on the draft regulations for marijuana that uh, Tom has put together and we have reviewed. Uh, and if there are any further comments, we can make those later on. Do I have a second? Aye. I would make up a formal copy. Has the planning board created comments like this? Are, are they doing their own or? No, I don't think so. I haven't heard that they are. I'll put it that way. Um, I think their comments will be in the form of the zoning bylaws. Mm -hmm. Okay, under new business, we have a joint meeting with the Finance Committee for 6.30, and being that it is about 6.20, uh, we can't move on to that right now. Um, Tom, do we have any items unanticipated 48 hours in advance? No. Okay. Um, so your update, do you want to give your update when they, the finance committee's here? Um, I don't need to do that. I think okay. that now. Uh, we're going to go over all of it anyway. I mean, all of the financial things. Okay. Um, this first thing we've already heard, I think, all of, but uh, 
In committee news, the Capital Improvements Planning Committee met Wednesday night and voted to recommend all four requests of the Highway Department, including $330,000 for repairing the bridge on the road. Uh, I am assuming this will be done with borrowed money and have included that language in a ballot question on the warrant. And I did check with Jan today, um, and she thinks um, doing a 10-year borrowing is fine. We can do five years with uh, state house notes and then a five-year bond. Uh, and that'll probably get us the the best interest deal that we could get. Okay. Um, the committee also noted a request from the fire chief for a replacement vehicle and noted that since the police cruiser is due to be replaced soon, that the police cruiser could be a suitable replacement vehicle for the fire chief when he's replaced. And then we went over all of that. Okay. Um, and what we would just turn your vehicle in for? Yeah, put up a sale. Or Okay. Trade it in or I don't know. We okay. de declare it surplus property and then we can yeah, put it on eBay or, or, get or whatever. Fine. Oh, okay. If you get a couple thousand for it, you might be lucky. Yeah. Okay. Well, whatever we can get for it. Uh, what was most disappointing or interesting about this talk was th that the state does have grants that might pay for projects like this, but the bridge has to be closed before the, we can get them. Yeah, right. And right. if that bridge is closed, Forget it. it means yeah. the school yeah. bus will have to go through the polling gate. Your fire trucks will have to go right directly through the gate. You know, no, that's, um, that's no good. It, it's unthinkable. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be bad enough when they repair it. And there used to be money in the state available for bridge projects like this, and it's really dried up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so departmental news. So we have received the first draft of the cherry seeds. Uh, yes. The, the governor's means. budget proposal gives two pieces of good news, which are, of course, subject to change. First, our assessments would go down $56,000, and our local aid would rise 40, almost $47,000, so a total gain of a little over $103,000. Mm. Now, I, I saw that on the sheets. Yeah. Sometimes. Why do you do that, Tom? <coughs> Why do you go down one? Um, well, this, this this has to do with the governor's budget, yeah. and it's all up for grabs. And now the Senate has a oh, sure. has a budget, and the House has a budget, and then there's a so conference saying. budget, and then there's a budget that the it's governor proposed. signs. So we're not going to know what that is. Right. So we have to plan for this. Uh, in the way I've seen it, budgets tend much more towards what they were the previous year mm -hmm. than including any major changes. Yeah. Uh, so chances are the assessments won't go down that much and the local aid won't rise that much. Mm. But the directions in both of them are very encouraging, so, so that's good. Um, as you know, there has been very difficult weather recently with thawing during the day and freezing at night. This has meant icy roads, especially the gravel roads, and also potholes and paved roads, as even small cracks are widened and undermined by freezing water. As a result of this, two highway trucks with different drivers have been damaged. One more, one less. Uh, one of the drivers was slightly hurt, but only lost a day of work. So, uh, it's difficult out there for the highway folks these days. Do we have any idea when those holes coming down the hill on 116 are going to be fixed? No. No. We have none. No. Are we on, are we on the state about that? <laughs> that that's been Ron, like that. Ron long. knows, Ron talked about it, you know, in the capital improvement. And he, he said that they have patched, they tried patching them, mm -hmm. and the next time the plows went by, they just oh, tore okay. the patches out. And so the state is doing this instead, you know, putting the cones there. And um, it'll, you know, they can't be fixed until Good weather, probably. Good weather, yeah. yeah. Okay. But catching them with cold patches, not. It's not working. Not yeah. going to work. No cold patches. Do you notice our sign's gone? Good. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and if you don't have the Conway Roads, go drive on the road down to Buckland. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Talking about the Quake Army? <laughs> That's what it looks like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Tom. And, uh, <laughs> Finally, uh, since the town puts occasional items in the visitor, we typically get a copy to proof. I noticed one article that had a misconception of how we were treating the funds reimbursed by the UCC after the tornado and let them know. At issue was the account to which the reimbursed funds were to be posted. 
I assured them that the funds were indeed going to go back to the Community Preservation Fund. The only question is how much goes to the historical preservation account and how much goes into the general reserves, meaning the general reserves of the Community Preservation Fund. Oh, and that's where they had misunderstood what general reserves you meant. Oh, yes. now that makes sense. Well, I, I'm not sure exactly what they misunderstood and when uh -huh. they I misunderstood. Think everything but, everything but, was uh, kind of I, I thought they, they meant, they meant that too, yeah. Into free cash account or something. Yeah, no, no, no. If money went out from an account and we're getting it back, it has to go back into that. Sure. That's what the law is. For future use. Sure. Obviously, that's what we follow. That's what our treasurer is very careful about following. So I did let them know before it went to press. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you, Tom. Do we have any concerns of the selectmen? No. Okay. Well, I had a oh, you have a concern? resident. Okay. Talk to me today about a little bit of concern. It's about the ticketing of automobiles on the side of the road. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. By the highway superintendent, and he was very, very distraught. This person was because. You get up in the morning and his neighbors got me on to find out their cars were gone in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. Their what? Their cars were, were towed, towed away in the middle of the night. Towed away? In the middle of the night. By who? The highway department. Mm -hmm. had the police department tow them away. Really? Right. He'd put warning stickers on them. Oh, ah, okay. And, uh, but the upsetting were... thing there was him because this is... Sure, there used to be a driveway at this house 45 years ago but many owners previously to the people on there now did away with the driveways. Mm -hmm. So they had yep. no choice but to park on the side of the edge of the road, where they've been parking for the last few years. Some, some other That's where they were parked at this time, and they got towed away. Yeah, well, and we, we went through all the proper procedures, so, oh, correct? Sure, and of course the select board reviewed the letter that was sent out to all town residents saying that this would right. be enforced. Right. And they were advised yeah. that they could come and meet with the board or meet with you to discuss their situation if they wanted to. Can you, yeah. told me, the police chief told me. Sure. Well, they will not, no. And I think they're making arrangements to, to park off street somewhere. Okay, so. all right. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, well, we're waiting for the Finance Committee. Uh, let me go into mail here. Uh, we got a letter from the Lieutenant Governor, uh, and it's addressed to us, and it says, I'm going to read the whole letter because it's very complimentary. Uh, I am writing to congratulate the town of Conway on having completed the best practices chosen as part of your community compact, which we signed together on June 28th 2016, fostering a strong partnership with our municipalities continues to be a top priority for the Baker Polito administration. And is it, it is exciting to have the community compact program available for our partners in local government. As you know, community compacts create clear mutual standards expectations and accountability for both the state and the municipalities as together we seek to create better government for our citizens. I want to applaud the town for choosing and finalizing the long-range financial planning and information technology best practices. With the assistance from community compact grants and the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, Conway was able to complete these best practices and make improvements in these key areas. The governor and I appreciate Conway participating in the Community Compact Program, and we look forward to partnering with you again in future rounds of best practice programs. Sincerely, Karen E. Polito, Lieutenant Governor. And I'd just like to um, to comment that, that Tom and Lisa uh, did a tremendous job in making sure that these were, were brought to fruition. We worked with uh, Joe um, uh, Markarian of the FERCOG on the long range financial planning and with information technology practices. We worked with um, Roy Cohen to improve, improve those. Roy is a uh, a Conway resident, and he is also on our finance committee. So he has done a tremendous job in helping us improve uh, all aspects of our information technology. 
and I'm certainly looking forward to the next round of best practices so we can make some more improvements. Mm -hmm. And if you would, could you put this on the website? Sure. Okay. So that everybody can see the Lieutenant Governor's fine words. <coughs> Related to that, um, okay. so just we have a few minutes here, but um, one of the things we haven't mentioned yet, just that, that we all talked about earlier, was um, when we're reviewing capital planning, what the limit should be for purchases that should be included in the capital plan versus things that can just be included in a, in a budget. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, in the past, we were using the number of $5,000. Um, Joe, this reminded me of this, Joe had tentatively left the $5,000 in the policy handbook that he gave to us, but we were talking about whether we should raise it to 10. Yes. And so in the capital planning, we voted to leave it at five. Oh, that's that's that was their recommendation. That, so that, that's at, at some point we should probably pass that as a select board, but the capital improvements committee's recommendation would be to leave it at five, which right. it used to be. And they are advisory. We get the final. We get the, the final, final say. say on that's that. right. Yes. Uh, I can put that on the agenda for next time. Next week. That's sure. Right. I'll put that in under your. Uh, report on the meetings you attended. That'd be great, that'd be great. I didn't think of it earlier, and, and it, reminded, it re reminded me, you talked about Joe Markarian and the policy mm -hmm. manuals that he made, and that was when we got into a discussion earlier of whether that number should be five or whether we should raise it. If, if, you, if you remember, he left it at five because that was historical for us, but he recommended. He did, he recommended we raise yes. it, that's right. Yeah. Um, do we do we have a, a finance committee out there? Are you gentlemen ready? Hey, on. You ready for us? We're, We're ready. ready. We've been ready. We're, we are ready. We're ready. We're passing the time. We're always ready for the finance committee, Roy. Always ready. Because are we ready for you? <laughs> Hope we got lots of questions. <laughs> I guess I'm going to say. I guess I'm going to say. Okay. 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 Um, all right, so we will start now at um, 6.33 with the joint meeting with the Finance Committee to review uh, some proposals for public safety, police, fire, ambulance. I, okay. I uh, did not ask the emergency management animal control officer or a tree warden to come in because their budgets are all level funded. I didn't sure. think there were yeah. any questions about that. No, that's, that's fine. That's fine. And in fact, um, the uh, the other uh, the other items are almost level funded. Mm -hmm. Sure, uh, but there are some changes. In there, and uh, okay. we might want to ask about those changes. All right, we want to start with police and radios. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, has everybody got a copy of the budget? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, as you can see, it's virtually level funded with two exceptions. Um, radio fees is uh, we are assessed through the FERCOG. That's radio maintenance fees. And they did anticipate that going up again this year. And the only other increase was on the software. That's going up a, have you a slight amount. Have seen the official increase? In they don't have it yet. I didn't no. see the, the, the oversight in, in the, ra in the radio fees. But is this, is this going to be enough, do you think? Um, 
according to the FERCOG, they think it'll cover it. They do? Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. we, we had a discussion about that at last uh, last week's uh, FERCOG council meeting. So and the, the oversight committee apparently has met, but the finance committee has not approved it, apparently. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the oversight committee made a recommendation to the to the general counsel. Their best guess is that should that should cover our situation. Yeah, we can adjust that if we have to, I guess. Yeah. And the hourly number goes down? Pardon? Your hourly number went down. Uh, right now it's level. Okay, I have a <coughs> no. Oh, um, I believe that the level funding can that you submitted was a le was the funding before the two and a half percent increase okay so um, I should replace that with the uh, just you know until we decide on any yeah. increase this year I'll replace that with the 38 472 for now oh I see no that was the budget yes that was the budget for FY 17 that was that figure I, I had uh, on this uh, chart, I had put in the uh, correct number for last year, okay. the updated number. So we're going to start at 38 or something? 38, 472, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not questioning that you have a lower budget again. <laughs> <laughs> That's so unusual. I mean, uh, on those, those numbers, those are dictated by the finance and a select board after the fact. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any any questions from the finance committee? So that's thirty eight four seventy two requested? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Pending a uh, cost of living increase. Oh okay. Potentially up to two and a half percent or or three if you got generous. But so this yeah. has that probably not this year. This has it built in? No, no, this does not have it's it built. No raises. Right. Not, none of them are supposed to have it built in, right? Yeah, right. Well, um, uh, there, there are... Most of them don't have it built in. The Board of Health uh, builds theirs in because, uh, and, and, I, and perhaps the town clerk, because for years uh, they were not assigned the increase that other um, town staff and departments were. So uh, they tend to err on the side of caution. As elected officials, they have they submit their own budgets, you know. So okay. And the radios. How many radios are there? The, the radio fee is what we pay as a share yeah. for the radio system. Yeah. That is not our radios per se. What you're thinking of is our radios. Okay. I see. So it's part that's of our the radio cooperative system. Cooperative uh, for the county system. And the costs are just going up. From the car. The the equipment is antiquated. Yeah. The uh, service is less than desirable, and we hope to within a few short years we will have a different system. What's that going to cost? We're hoping I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping, but I'm not going to speak on that right now. The other the other night at the FERCOG meeting, they want to maintain for the next year the current system. And then transition to the 800 system. Uh, there's there's some work. There's some things in the works to get some funding to do that. Right. Because uh, even even the transition is going to cost about three and a half million dollars. Right. Oh wow. Okay. Um, for the for the 26 <laughs> towns. Okay. So so what's the 33,000 mentioned in the paragraph? Oh, it's supposed to be three thousand. Sorry. Oh. Okay. Big difference. The the yeah. The one thing that we do have to be aware of down in the future, even if the state comes through with that that funding on the leops, um, the towns will be on the hook for buying new radios. Yes. Which would be About a substantial. Three grand a piece. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was your story. And I was at the fire chief's meeting this last week, and they say that's all still up in the air. So don't the the, the, the state police have been fully funded 
hundred well, the governor's proposed the whole hundred twenty two million yep. for funding for that, which includes the radio updates and everything else. But they do not know whether that includes radios or nothing has come out of the state police as to as to what it covers. Right. Are you talking about the 122 million? Yeah, in the okay. 122 million. Okay. None of that 122 million has been allocated to the FERC. As far as we know, right? right. So that's you know the jury's out basically. Yeah, the, yeah, there's on one too many unanswered go. questions yeah, they, at yeah. this point. But yeah. the uh, the meetings I was at, they put it right out there. Do not plan like the last ten years ago when they did the oh, radio system. Them. They they gave us the funding for the radios, for the portable van uh, vehicle. It was part of they said, don't home, plan on, security. Don't funding. plan on it this time. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. So you're looking at probably. If that's the case, you'd be looking at probably better than fifty thousand dollars for radios. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Well, I have a question for you, Tom, regarding the cost of living adjustment. How do you, is there a, uh, a formula? What do you use for determining that? The cola. What do you use for determining that? Uh, well, you guys look at. Uh, what the budget looks like, and I come up with a figure that says, here's what it would cost. It's usually about $15,000, something like that. It's usually like $10,000 for, it's, it's several thousand dollars per half a percentage fee. I forget exactly what it is, but it, it comes out to about uh, $12,000 to $15,000. Um, I mean, the cost at, of the, the, at the FERCOG Finance Committee meeting a couple of weeks ago, we discussed uh, the CPI um, index here in Franklin County uh -huh. for that 1.7%. Uh -huh. So at the FERCOG, obviously, we rounded it up to two. Uh -huh. And, you know, it's, it's up, up to the Finance Committee to rec make a recommendation. Usually it's either two or two and a half percent uh -huh. as an add on. And the, the difference is negligible in terms of, of how it affects the budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, do you know what uh, anyone heard what they might do for cost of living for the Social Security? What's the cola for Social Security this year? Two years ago it was zero. It's probably Last zero year it was again. Point three. And it's, over, it's coming up. We'll be here. Well, maybe not with this Congress. They might not get anything together. But because I'm going to say that there's. At least a quarter of the town's population, if not right now, within a year, is going to be 65 and over. Only a quarter? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was more like that would be 35 over 60. percent. That would, if you're going to do the big Y over 60 senior discount, then we're near a third of the town. <laughs> but 65, if we're headed to, you know, it's going to be about, it's 500 people. And then, like I say, a couple of years, it'll be a third of the population. Unless there's a big boom of kids coming. Can our council on aging handle this, Tom, you think? Huh? Can our council on aging handle this? Well, what yeah. I'm suggesting is that you should keep in mind when you do the cost of living increases. You know, a quarter of the vote, of a quarter of the taxpayers in town, because we're not talking about the seven-year-olds. Last couple of years, it's been 0 0.3, and I don't know about this year. Yeah. Just to say so. That's all I'm just saying. Sure. That's the realities. Yeah. I, I, I will say that uh, the fact that Conway does not have a senior center and does not support uh, the town library uh, publicly is one of the reasons that the town does have a little bit more money than some of the other towns around here. Mm -hmm. I mean, our, our library support is so low. We, we, we do support it itself. We do vote money for the library, but it's... Well, grand. We vote the, the minimum required to retain right. state accreditation, which right. is about $2,500 a right. year. And, so, and to be part of the library system. Just to be part of the system. Yes, I, right. I don't believe they've ever taken the money. I don't know about that. Uh, That's, that is a claim that I heard recently. Uh-huh. They're very they proud. Have, I thought they have to take the money. I thought they had proud. to take the money. No, no, to the really. town has to appropriate it. Ah, uh, I, I town has to be show of good faith okay. that they're investing in your library. Okay, uh -huh. makes sense. I have a question. I don't mean to, but it would help me understand something better. Can you tell me exactly what the cog is in terms of? I mean, we had county government that went away, mm -hmm. 
And so the, the Franklin Regional <laughs> Council of Governments replaced the county government because they realized that ending the county <clears throat> government, there were services that would be needed for the whole county. Right. That basically, the FERCOG has taken over many of those uh, many so of those functions. So is it a? It's not a nonprofit. It's a. It is a legitimate agency of the state. It is a. It is a. Yes, it is a state agency because it is a regional planning agency as well as a council of governments. Okay. So it has funding from the state. Uh, many of their grants are federally funded, okay? Um, and they do a tremendous job at getting both, not only their, their planning agency funding, but their state grants and their federal grants. Okay, so it's a way to funnel these different monies, but in terms of organization, this is what I was saying. It's a public body. It's a public body. Yes. It's not the same as like a so service people, net or They have to obey the open meeting law. <laughs> the people, <laughs> the same, people that work for them, so they get they get paid by the state. Well they get paid by well, the well no, they get they get who they writes get, the checks. They get paid by the FERCOP. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, um and, and essentially oh, uh, the FERCOG so is seen by many of the other regional planning agencies as the model mm -hmm. because so the staff good. is outstanding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was really questioning. They, they do a do a tremendous for, job. I was just if, curious. If, if we if we had to, you know, we we use the accounting system. We have the, the the health system. We have the cooperative inspection system and a number of other you know functions. If we had to do that on our own, it would cost us at least twice as much oh, sure. as the FERCOG charges us. Absolutely. Yeah. So it, yeah. it's it's working very well for the right. not only for us but all the towns in, in Franklin right. County. No, but in just trying to put that two percent number in perspective, that's why I was asking whether what is that agency exactly. Mm -hmm. And so is that two percent what are state employees going to be getting? Does anybody is it different? Like UMass people are gonna be different than somebody else, or is it all the same. Do we know? Um, it, yeah, I think I think UMass is separate. There, there are all kinds of contracts at yeah. UMass. Everybody's there. There are all and, kinds and, of unions. And so, yeah, there are union contracts involved too. So it's it, it's not apples to apples. You know, there's no transparency at the state level. Just but 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 two two percent or two and a half percent is is really kind of like really in the ballpark. Yep. You know. That's that's what you're going to find. Most of your towns mm -hmm. are going to be giving. Okay, is is that in that two two and a half range? So you look at our line item eight thirty and I go uh, two fifty eight thousand dollars we pay them a year. And, and and actually actually is that do we have that? You know, actually our assessment's going down a little this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a there's a statutory assessment that we get for being oh, yeah. Oh, going down. Yeah, going down. Oh, good. There's a regional assessment on top of that, and then we sign up for particular programs for which we pay extra as well. So it's a kind of a a la carte approach to the programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a basic fee, and then there's, you layer on what you what services you want. But if there was fewer inspections from one year to the next, we'd owe less. Yeah. We actually just got a, a reimbursement from the uh, cooperative inspection program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How much? A couple thousand dollars. Why? More than what they figured for average inspections. Yeah. yeah. They, uh, they, uh, they, we had, we had fewer inspections. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Didn't know if it was better to return money to you know a dividend thing. Yeah. Any questions for Ken on his budget? Well, so in terms of the hourly wage, Ken, how uh, are we competitive with other towns or our size in Franklin County in terms of what we pay per hour? I would say we're Franklin. Right right yeah. Right. Thank you. Any other questions for the chief? Any yeah. other comments that you have? Oh, go ahead. Bob. Good job, Chief. <laughs> As usual. On a good budget. Yeah. As usual. And good services. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Whatever some paper. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs>
Goodbye. Well, do you want to change seats or you want to stay here? I stay here. It doesn't matter to me. All right, Bob. What do we got? Okay. Let's go. Fire Department 1, the like, Police Department hasn't changed that at all. Uh, again, the labor, I don't know why the labor went down. It should have been level funded from 2018. Did you say, Tom? Yeah. Um, oh, why? At least it would have been 955 instead of 455. Don't know why that's there. I'll make sure it's changed. There's no changes in Stuff like that. Uh, radio fees went up. I figured them going up. Uh, well, Tom said in the beginning it's 500, but it's actually more than that because we anticipate the large increase. That figure may come down <coughs> when we get, I, I anticipate that to come down when we get the report from the county on it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That would be my guess. Uh, everything else remains the same except for. Cell phone charge. I'm the only one, I think, in the town of Conway who owns a town on cell phone. Uh, uh, I run it like it's my office. It's where I know where I have all my phones, uh, my office phones is connected to the cell phone, so everything. I don't have to be in my office to maintain a, the fire department office. It can be done by the cell phone. Okay. And it's somewhat expensive, so that's what it figures out about a year, thirteen fifty. Okay. Uh, vehicle maintenance, I went up a few hundred dollars to $7,500. It's my anticipation that after July 1st, our engine one, which is our 2003 International, has valve problems with it, some leak. They don't work properly. A lot of the firefighters have a miserable time operating a truck because of the condition of the valves. So I, it's my intention to send it out after July 1st when summertime gets here to a repair shop, and have them either gone through, replaced, upgraded, whatever it takes to get them to work right. And my estimate on that was around four to four to five thousand dollars. You don't want to send it out sooner, Bob? Than, Ju than July first? Well, I could, but there's not the money in the budget to cover for it. Uh, Bob, the number I have here is twelve hundred dollars. So much effort on for vehicle maintenance. For valve repairs. Okay, well. So that's a higher higher estimate now. No, wait a minute. No, that's Where that's, that's plus that's plus twelve hundred for yeah. that category. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought you were saying that the repairs were going to be. Well, they're going to be they're going to be a big percentage of that whole repair budget. What they're going to be. Okay. Yeah, okay. I thought I thought you were saying that the the uh, repairs See, were going to be. repairs are going to go down right. some this year because oh, of the new fire truck. Right. Just covering the total warranty, uh -huh. so you don't have to worry about any repairs on that truck. Mm -hmm. So that's going to go down a little bit. I'm asking for another twelve hundred to raise it up, yeah. which oh, um, okay. should should average that yeah. budget out to getting that four to five thousand dollar repair. Mm -hmm. And if anything happens to one of the other older trucks, it should be clear sailing for the year. Okay. And it's a guess. I mean, it's mm -hmm. only a guess. How's the brush truck doing? That's the new engine. That's all. That's running good. They're running good. Oh, that's so great. Question for the chief. Well, it's really for you guys because um, so. The fact that, that we're in this year's budget, but you can clearly see that there's repairs being made. Is there any jeopardy in public safety waiting between now and then? <clears throat> no, I don't think so, because it's, it's not our frontline truck at this moment. It's our uh, second. But if there was, I would say consider second getting, front line consider truck. coming to, for the, to reserve fund. No, I, I, um, we can still operate it with difficulty. Oh, I'm sure if we had a public safety matter, we would, we would take from the reserve fund to fix fix the truck. Yeah. I just can wait the summertime in order to get it done for the dead of the winter. Sure. Um, yeah. Any other questions for the chief? Yeah, Bob, the, the radio fees? Yes. Is it, are those radio fees similar to what Kenny was yes, talking about? Yes, that's why I think same, that figure's going to come down. Yeah. So we know for sure. So just the way it was budgeted. Your radio you fees more radio. for the fire department. I usually uh, fourteen hundred more. You pay radio fees for the amateur don't do you? Just the it's base a, like fee that we pay to the Frocog or wherever it goes for you, the, you, you the you maintenance, the maintenance the yearly maintenance of it. The, the same as what are, Kenny does. I don't have that figure right with me. I could find it for you, but uh, well, I just went so there's a 
for the radio fees it cost the fire department more than the police you more radio. I, have more radios. Radios. Sir, more radios. I have more radios okay so the radio fees See, I, the, yeah. police, the police have Kenny one. was making the distinction that that wasn't the radios that was the fee for the system exactly the same yeah. same thing with fire okay so if you look at the two numbers yeah. they're what, but the fees are assessed time. Yeah, because he's got Not more radios. He's got more radios than Ken does. It's but it's it's a fee per radio, radio for the system. Yeah. You have yeah. nothing to do with buying the radio. Right. Right. Oh, exactly. we don't. That's, exactly. that's what I want to understand. Yep. Thank you. And we get off a year for that. We have we have a year to go. Another year. Yeah. And, but you don't. So with the increase. <laughs> yeah. How many more radios you got than the, than a the lot. police? A lot. I can't. I'm going to guess. I don't know what police. Well, the police have police too. The police have one vehicle radio. Mm -hmm. I think they have three, either three or four. Over the, uh, one four. vehicle radio, and I think they have four or five portable radios. Mm -hmm. Not even that. I have five vehicle radios, and I have twelve <laughs> portable radios. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other, difference. any other questions for the chief? The cell phone charge, uh -huh. you said you were the only one, but it, look, it looks like it's doubling this. Well, it was, it's been running in the rears. I don't know if I'm show that. I'm going to show that here. Uh, it's different. Uh, it's 22. Yeah, it's 15. 17. It was, very, it was a little cool. bit higher than the budget. I based it on I based it on uh, 12 months is what they've been charged per month now. Uh -huh. So they're charging $100 a month for one cell phone. $130 a month. Well, and isn't Gemma on that too? Yes, I, I'm covering the cost of a cell phone in the ambulance too. Which is no, I'm not. No, you're not. She got that in her budget. No, that's yeah. it's in her oh, budget. Oh right, it's but mine's only like it's like fifteen dollars oh, okay. a month. Yeah, hers is about fifteen yeah. bucks a Fourteen something. Yeah, here, here's a three. Yeah, so you get you get a, a lot of gigabytes or something there. Yeah, I got to because of all the well, when it comes in over the phone. I mean, because yeah. it's his office. <coughs> you would be shocked. Most people tag the text or email the fire department. Very, very few phone calls come in for fire hmm. wow. It's mostly text and emails. Wow. Okay. And I guess that's pretty common in a lot of places now. So. Yeah. Oh. Any other comments for the chief? Okay, just want to make a comment. Uh, please note on the fiscal year 2015 through 2017 budget, the chief has been under his budget each year. So thank you, Chief. Appreciate that. We try to do it. Okay. Next one is ambulance. Gemma, take it away. Okay. So for the most part, things have stayed relatively the same as well. Um, we did go up on the radios, obviously, for the same reasons as mm -hmm. Kenny and Bob. Um, I went down a little bit on the postage just because I don't have a lot of need for it. Um, I went up on the training budget um, in anticipation of for EMTs. getting new EMTs okay. um, for their continuing education training okay. um, because those costs are continuing to rise and hopefully if we get more EMTs we'll have more people we need to do training for. How, how are you doing with recruiting on that? I'm open to suggestions. Okay. Um, we're, we're working on it. I've okay. got a couple of people that are in the process um, okay. right now. And we're with the changeover in going to the national EMT system versus the state being its own system um, has has made the training a little bit more complicated and a little bit more intense. Um, so it's it's a daunting task to ask anybody to commit to the amount of training that it requires. Mm -hmm. um, but we're we're working on it. Chris and I keep plugging away and keep pleading with people and hoping that they will want to become EMTs. Um, so I've got a, I've had a few inquiries and a few feelers from people, so I'm hopeful that maybe over next summer I can get some, you know, this coming summer we can get some more people um, through the class. Okay. And Didn't we vote to pay the cost of yes. the training? Yes. yes. I mean, and then that comes out of your budget. Yeah, there's a separate, as my understanding is there's a separate line for that 
Um, as far as that, I thought that's what we figured out last year. I remember year. we voted it, but I wasn't sure. I'm not sure how it ended it up working of, exactly. But that's in your budget. It comes out of your funds. Yes. Out of your budget. Yes. Um, and, you know, so that is, that's definitely a selling point, but it's still, you know, it's a lot of time and commitment to the training itself. Hmm. Um, and then hmm. not to mention the calls and everything that come afterwards. Um, is it a volunteer? Commission or is it a paid? It's it's considered paid volunteer, so we get paid for going on calls. Um, we don't get paid for trainings very rarely. Every once in a while, there will be, you know, some state grant funding or something that'll offer to pay for people to do trainings, but typically you're not paid. So any of the continuing ed credits that you have to do, which is pretty substantial, we have to have 48 credit hours every two years, um, and typically those that's not paid the time for it. We, the ambulance as a whole pays for the training, but it doesn't pay the individuals to go, you know, sit there for six hours after work and do training. <laughs> Another unfunded mandate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. Um, the fire department's the same way. The yeah, firemen only paid on call. Yeah, right. By the hour. If, if people respond to a call, then they submit their payroll and they get paid. Teachers are the same way, Bob. But <laughs> there's, there's a lot of extraneous That's not true. details yeah. that go on. That the grant course, they don't get paid on, but they have to take the course. Uh, of course. And pay for the course, of course too, in their case. Um, the maintenance and repair budget for the ambulance went up a little bit just because we did have more repairs this past year than we anticipated. Um, and as the ambulance ages, there are going to be repairs needed. Um, and the software has gone down a little bit in cost, so I dropped that down a little bit. And that covers our the software for our, our computer that we do our reports on and all the reporting that we have to do um, as far as run reports. So that's down a little bit. And <coughs> the billing charges have gone, I put those up a little bit just because they our billing company has increased their fees slightly, mm -hmm. um, so that's just kind of to offset that. How, how are we doing on, on collections? Um, <coughs> I haven't heard anything specific from Coastal as far as you know major ones that have been in arrears or anything. It seems like they're doing pretty good. So we're, we're getting we're getting paid for all our runs. It seems to be yeah. Okay. Who's the billing company? Um, coastal Medical Billing. They're in um, Sutton. How does the billing affect the budget? Like, if that's an additional input outside of the, like, how is that being accounted for? Um, you mean the amount, what we get in from? Right, like you're accounting for all the expenses here, but is that what's going on our budget, or is that? That goes into a separate fund. <coughs> You'll see that there's two line items in the annual budget for the ambulance. Okay. An input and an output. Well, <clears throat> there's, right? there's, there's one item in the operating budget, and then there's two money articles. And the money, the, the town has, has uh, traditionally given $15,000 of its operating budget to the ambulance um, as, a, as a stability mm -hmm. measure because all the other money that they get is from receipts. And sometimes they can get as little as 80%, 70% of your, of your receipts in a given year. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what they get from that, any excess um, goes into the stabilization fund, um, but they, 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 uh, they pay much of their own budget. Uh, what, what is, uh, what is your, uh, uh, so your total budget is $46,000, we pay fifteen, so we pay roughly a third of that budget. They pay two-thirds through their receipts, and whatever's left goes into their stabilization fund for a new ambulance. Uh, so that's how, that's how that you know, traditionally works. So it's a little, little, little bit different of the way of setting it up, because the ambulance produces its own revenue. Right. I, maybe I missed it. Um, the training. So in, in FY 2017, 
it was obvious that something special occurred, you needed to, or some training became available unexpectedly, is this, and so there was a lot more expended than was budgeted. And then 18, we're at 950. I, I mean, so is there, is that a one time, one off thing that would happen in 2017? Do you, were you there, Gemma? That, I was there. Um, that amount was to prepay for three individuals to take the EMT class and the training. Um, so that's, that's what that $3,800 is. The majority of it is, um, is the cost of three classes. We, we, um, we switched in that fiscal, we switched in that fiscal year. To, to pay the training, because essentially before that, they were having to pay their own training. Mm -hmm. And that was a burden I for see. many of the people who wanted to become EMTs. Okay, so so we, we covered that with an agreement have, that they would stay for a certain amount of time. A year. And so for yeah. FY 2019, we have enough there for <clears throat> one individual to, to train, is that? Yes, in that line specifically, yes. And we were running short on EMTs right, I, I during, during that fiscal yeah. 2017. And how's, how's the staffing situation now? Um, it's status quo at the moment. Um, the individuals that are in the classes have not completed their training yet. Um, like I said, the change in the pro in the going from the state program to a national recognized program has increased the amount of headache basically in becoming trained. Um, so it's it's prolonged the process, um, but we do anticipate that they will be through and hopefully certified by, I was hoping by Christmas, but that didn't, that didn't work. Um, but hopefully within the next couple of months. Is what you're talking about there part of this 3,800, this, these people who haven't finished their training? Yes. Their, their initial <laughs> class fees are in that 3,800. And the agreement that they signed was that they would become certified within a year of the date of signing it, which they signed it in, it was mid-April, I think, when they started, um, and then stay with the town for at least a year as an EMP after their training. And if they don't do one or both of those, then they have to pay the money back. So we, so you're, that's where why you're not budgeting a very high training because you're not expecting to add more as much as correct the benefits and if, of 2017. You know, if we get more people lined up that want to take it and need more money to do that, then I'm sure you'll come back. We'll out figure it out somehow. But for right now, we'll just go with what it's at. And and you and Chris have to maintain your certification, so you have to get continuing education as continuing well. Continuing education, recertification fees. <coughs> yep. So the question is, if people become nationally certified versus state, does that make them more desirable as a potential hire for other, uh, as we keep, as our, our wages compared to <coughs> your opinion? Well, I mean, the national certification is, it's recognized by any state that recognizes the national certification. Okay. Um, it, if you wanted to move to Vermont, then you could become an EMT in Vermont. Mm -hmm. um, so that is, you know, could be considered a concern if people weren't dedicated to the town, I guess mm -hmm. you could say. Um, and that's, that's why we made, in the contract, we made it clear that they needed to, you know, a, a lot, a certain amount of time and dedication to Conway um, after their training. And then if they continue you know, if they want to get recertified and keep their certification up and move somewhere else, that's that's up to them. Um, I think for the most part, other than if they were, someone was going to go work for a full-time agency, our wages, at least within Franklin County, are, are very competitive because there are a lot of strictly volunteer services um, that don't, you know, they might get a stipend at the end of the year of 50 bucks towards gas money or something, but they don't. You know, a lot of other agencies, especially volunteer ones, don't pay for anything. Some of them pay for their for research training, but a lot of them, they don't get paid for calls or anything like that. So this is what, our EMTs don't do it for the income. Right. Yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> they don't, I, I have a day job too. <laughs> to the help, basically, um, it's like the firemen. I mean, 
you, we got firemen that will spend uh, uh, three hours a week, uh, twice, three times a month, plus do all the training that they don't get paid for and all the stuff, and some of them average getting a check for 50, 100 bucks at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. I mean, where's your value there? Mm -hmm. you know? Okay, any other questions for Jim? <coughs> Jim, do you have any more comments? Um, not specifically on the budget. I, okay. I do have a question, and I don't know if this is the right place to bring it up or not, but um, over the last couple of years since I took over as director, and I'm still treading water and trying to figure out what I'm doing, but um, as an EMT and as an ambulance, we have discussed trying to get the funding to buy a Lucas device, which is... Um, it's basically an automated um, chest compression device. Right. You guys might have heard about it in different yeah. places. Um, in the last year or two, we have had several <clears throat> cardiac arrest calls where we requested the Lucas be brought from Deerfield um, to assist with CPR so that it made our lives a heck of a lot easier. Um, so I don't know. I'm not sure when or how exactly I asked for the money to do that, but I'm looking for guidelines as to when and how I do that. How, mu how much is the Lucas device? Um, the current, I just, I happened to just Google it right before I came over here to get a current price. Um, they're around between fifteen and sixteen thousand dollars. Okay. Um, why don't Why don't you get together with Tom and the Capital Improvements Planning Committee and. Right. See if we can we can do one of those. You you think there's an absolute need you, for you it? You just wouldn't believe what yes. what our EMTs okay. go through if um, they're going to give somebody else somebody CPR for 30 minutes or more. Oh yeah, yeah sure. sure. And this machine is just a wonder. It's a miracle wonder, and okay. the success rate has been tremendous with this machine. Okay. Um, Study yeah. does the how long does it last for? Does it um. The machine as a whole, or you yeah, know, like would you expect to get five years out of it? Two years? I would say at least five or ten years. Um, I don't know for sure what the the life expectancy is. Did Zach say anything the other night when we did that? I think the only thing that can really go wrong I mean, is just, you have to replace the batteries. The more. battery. It is a battery operated system, so that it's you know mobile and can be moved with the rechargeable kitchen. batteries. In it. Um, mm -hmm. And it has rechargeable batteries. It also has a cord that can be plugged into it and then get plugged into a wall outlet if you're if you have an extended transport time or anything like that. How long um, has okay. it been in existence for? Is it like a new Three product? or four years probably? It's been like five. This four is the five. the new one is the Lucas 2, which is a, they've changed the design just a little bit to make it more user friendly. Um, the Lucas as a whole, I think, I want to say it's been around about eight or ten years. Um, and they've been in this area for four to six, I would say. Where would, where would, it, where would it come from? Do you know? What do you mean? When you said it's been in this area. Yeah. Um, Where did cool rain. Out? Well, I just mean agencies have had it in this area oh. for use. Yeah. Um, cool rain ambulance has one. South County ambulance has one. Um, Medcare has, a, has. No, they don't have any. Northampton ambulance has some. One or two, I think. Um, but the studies have shown that continuous good quality compressions are what actually save people's lives if they, you know, if if they're viable to be if saved. That was going to do it, and, that was doing it. Yeah. Right, okay. and relying on humans to be able to do it, you know, we all, we all know how to do good CPR, we've done it, but you can only do it for so long before sure. you can't do it. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. you, you know, the time that it takes to change rescuers to continue the compression, you're basically, you're priming a pump, and then when you have to switch, even if it's for 30 seconds, Lots you lose prime. prime. Yeah, and sure. it makes it very difficult to maintain that status that you need to be at. Yeah. Um, and the Lucas takes that away. You put it on and boom, yeah. you have compression, you have accurate, good quality, the right depth, the whole nine yards, and you can focus on other things. You can assist with extrication, you can do breathing, you can get oxygen, you can get medications into the patient, you can do so much more. And I got the ambulance and go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You yeah. can do that. You can just, you know, get headed to the hospital. Yeah. Um this it straps right to the around the patient, it holds mm -hmm. on to them. It's not going anywhere. Um 
and it's been very, very valuable the few times that we have needed it. And I hope that we don't need it that much. Yeah. But when you need it, you need it. it it's such a valuable piece of uh, equipment that General, through the South County Animal Service, had them come up this last week to the fire department on Wednesday uh -huh. night. And trained all the firefighters on how to use it too. Uh, okay. Is that something you could separately go for for insurance too, if we had it? You know. I don't know. I would have to look into that. Um, all right, Jim. Why don't you coordinate with Tom? Okay. And we'll get we'll get a, a warrant article on on the warrant and okay. and move forward with that. Okay. Okay. Any other questions for Gemma? No. Okay. Thank you, Gemma. Appreciate it. You brought that up. Thank yeah. You. yeah. Good. Good. Uh, good call there. Thanks. Okay, next items we have the 290 series emergency management animal control officer and tree warrant. These are all small budgets, they're all level funded. Uh, we didn't ask uh, these individuals to come in because of, of that, the fact that they're level funded and there's no, no real, uh, you know, they're not, they're not uh, significant budgets. Anybody have any questions on these? Okay. And, and we have the 15000 this year? I mean, that they won't break the bank? What are we, talking we about? don't have a budget yet. I'll have, I'll have a budget in okay. another three or four weeks. Okay. For, for, for the Lucas. You, you know. uh, 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 oh, that, that, that'll, that'll be a, a, a warrant article. Right. Yeah. Right. It, not, on, not on the operating budget, but a separate. Yeah, capital. Yeah. Okay. That's it. That's it. Thank you, no. gentlemen and Andrew. Thank you. Um, appreciate you guys coming in. Um, any announcements? We have any announcements? Yeah. Okay, our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, February 5th, here in the town hall at 6 o'clock with a joint meeting with the Finance Committee at 6.30. Oh, not public safety. Uh, it's uh, Town Administrator Legal Assessors, more or less. Okay. A, a kind of a grab bag of, of stuff. But the assessors are in budget, so. Thank you all.